today's show is back to the back of the back to the back of the bus was Michelle Moore. Michelle Moore was born three years after this. I think I hear her now. Today's show is dedicated to Barbara O'Neill. She was one of the pioneers in Olympia. My friend Keith Eubanks uh, had really wanted to take part in a show of this nature. However, he died before we got to it. So today is the day for the visit with a person of high strangeness. Hi, Michelle. Hello. How are you? Doing great. You finally got here? I got here. Took you, what, 12 years to oh. do a show with me? Well, <laughs> I'm here. You're here, yeah. I'm here. Um, to, uh, to begin with, I want to establish something. Uh, okay. uh, what's your relationship to me? I'm your daughter. Oh, yes, you are. Okay. Favorite daughter? Favorite daughter. Wait, only daughter? Only daughter, yeah. Would you say we politically agree? For the most part. We do? Um, with some things, but you're very different and... Um, so that's very, a no, right? Very out of this world, yeah. That's a no, that's, okay. That's a no, right. In our personal life, do we agree? No, not always. That's a no too, that's right? A no. <laughs> yeah, that's a no. That's a no. Okay, well, haven't established that. Um, we kind of need to get that out of the way so we can go to the rest of the show because today we're going to talk about some stuff we do agree on. Okay, okay. Would you agree to that? I'm here. Yeah, like the president said, let's agree to... Disagree. That's what we're going right. to do today. Well, okie dokie, so we're going to get all ready. Oh, I forgot to say, it's the visit. With a person of high strangeness. That's and it. her daughter. And her daughter, yeah. Right. Okay. It's on? It's on. Oh, where, where good. <laughs> My ca our camera person, your daughter. <laughs> your daughter, Ebony, is at work, so. Um, so we have to wait out. We have to wing it. Here's my head. It's hot outside. Look, I put a knot on my head. You like it? Mm-hmm. I got my shades. Oh, cool. Now, let's get serious for a minute, okay? You were born three years after the voting rights. And you were born in Madigan. Right. Madigan Military Hospital. And then eventually, uh, well, he was about two, three years old when we came to Olympia. So you were um, in Olympia most of your life, per se. For the most part. Mm -hmm. can, can you tell me a little bit what it was like to grow up um, your early years as a multiracial child. Uh, if I remember right, there was you and your brother, uh, a Japanese uh, woman, so that he would have been an admiration and the O'Neill children. That's what it, that's all it was, right? Right. I, I, I think that there were, um, back then, it, I mean, the homes just came later. But growing up in Olympia was different. Um, never really thought, fought, well, never really was able to fit in. And um, I never used my first name. I always used my middle name and got in trouble for that. But always being recognized as the odd one out was different. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things where um, you're always the brown one. Mm -hmm. You're always the different one. You never fit in. You always, I, I always felt like um, I didn't belong. Mm -hmm. And then as we got older and um, we moved away, I was able to tell the difference on the way people of color were supposed to be treated. Mm. When we moved to Louisiana, uh, I was, although I was black, <laughs> I was the one that was the little girl with the Puerto Rican hair. Puerto Rican hair. Puerto Rican hair. hair. I, I everyone liked that, me. It yeah. was different. It wasn't like I was the person that everyone was afraid to talk to. Um, got along well with pretty much everyone there. and. Mm -hmm. Living here has been, and still is, a challenge. 
um, as you know, you know, because your mom. I have yeah. lots and lots of kids. Mm -hmm. And when I first, uh, when eight? we, you have many eight now. I have eight. Eight. When yeah. um, when we came back from Louisiana after our house fire, which you can talk about. Yes. Um, we were terrorized by the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan, and eventually we got. The Great Karl Marx City, the attorney, the attorney from Spokane, to represent us. Um, he was the human rights uh, attorney for the White House through I don't know how many presidents. And he had, in essence, what happened, he had went to uh, Canada and heard a talk at a Klan rally. And that's how he found out about the whole thing. And he came forward and he helped us. Yeah. Yeah, well, um... The story behind that is that we lived in this house and the Ku Klux Klan prior owner, I believe, owned the house mm -hmm. and the person had passed away and wanted the house. Peabody's. The Peabody's. And mm -hmm. they used to meet in front of our house. They mm -hmm. did things like dump garbage in our yard mm -hmm. and um, they de-bled our Doberman mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately they threw a bomb through the window and we were forced to leave. So we came back up here. Mm -hmm. And that was really nice. It wasn't long before children followed. And mm -hmm. oh yeah, and uh, uh, Carl, um, what, what's what's the runner's name? Carl. Oh, his, his aunt Lois. Carl Lois. His aunt took us in. Remember? Mm -hmm. Oh, you wasn't there. Excuse me. I was in Colorado. You was in Colorado. Anyway, Colorado. Esther mm -hmm. Lois is the one that took us in. Mm -hmm. Right. But when we came back here, and it didn't take long, I started having kids. Mm -hmm. uh, when they were old enough for school. They went to Madison Elementary, and they came home, and they said, Mom, we're the only brown kids there. <laughs> and this was back in uh, 89, I think it was 89, when I started having children going to school, and they recognized immediately that they were the only brown ones. Mm -hmm. And But but by that, uh, I'm going to go backwards a little bit. At the time that we moved to Olympia, when you was very little, Olympia was still on a blacklist from the military because of the racial tensions we had here. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, you know, through race relations and the Urban League and Blacks in Government that I belong to, along with Barbara and Neil and some of the people, mm -hmm. um, we got that all taken care of. So as a result of that, a lot more minorities came to town. And Dixie Lee Ray was governor. and. Um, uh, she insisted, uh, so between her and President Carter, it was determined that we needed to mix up things a little bit. There was some kind of bill that had to do with the military um, where the guys didn't get promoted at the rate that um, they were supposed to. So she worked that in. So what they did is they brought in the head of the head of the departments from different places, and they were Afro-Americans. Mm -hmm. So uh, Vernon Stoner and, and, and some of the people that, that you knew grow, growing up. Right. Mm -hmm. And they brought them in. So that, of course, mixed up the, the child population a little bit. I remember trying, um, the, the Nisqualis uh, offered to have you come to their school because you look more like that than, than anything else. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that too much, but I know yeah. that um, one of my kids looked like a little Nisqually and then yeah. go down and... And, and, and so as time went on, uh, things, would you say things got a little better? Oh yeah, then, then uh, Jackson came in, Selma Jackson, and her daughter was the first black um, homecoming queen for Timberland High School. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do remember that. In fact, she was in school the same time I was. I think she's older. Mm -hmm. A year or two. Then, then the next thing, Puerto Ricans came, working at the cheese factory. And then, um, uh, things, like I said, things got mixed up. Uh, Alice Hunter, was uh, she was Afro-American. Then they brought in the refugees from Cambodia and Laos. So some of the light-skinned blacks became Cambodians <laughs> because they couldn't really tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So we went through that phase. Well, I know now it seems like... Um it's very diverse if you go to certain very. areas, but then you're still you're still faced with the stereotypical behavioral stuff that are expected of you. You can walk into a store, mm -hmm. and as soon as you walk in, you know everyone up. zooms <laughs> in on you. Yeah. Well, what do you want? What can I help you with? Mm -hmm. um, you're not allowed to look at something yeah. without being questioned. 
Uh, not in a sense that you're being questioned for what you're looking for, but you know, really, what are you doing in what my are store? You doing in my store? Exactly. Yes. Um, I've had occasions where I've gone with people and and gone to pay them money for something, and I had someone standing next to me, and rather than them looking at me in the, the eyes, they're handing my money to someone else because they're not really looking at me. All they see is a brown hand. Um, you know, and so it, it's little things like that. We have. There, I mean, you know, there, there are some instances that the kids have come across. I didn't come across too much growing up, just the, the teasing and, you know, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, when, when you came up uh, uh, some kind of way, since I was a member of all these things, you, uh, you know, I was well known and, and I think fear kept them from you more than anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get the stigma that everyone else did. However, yeah. my children have right. come across a few yeah. things. Um, Quite a few things, actually. One of my sons had. Do you remember when he Cyrus, was a, when he was five? Yeah. Um, he was five years old. Yeah, actually, he was walking to school, and they had taught him in preschool, you know, some "I love you" signals and things like that. And a police officer pulled him over and wanted to find out what gang he was representing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When I found out, I was absolutely really appalled. I filed a, uh, a complaint. It was addressed, and they found, you know, I, my, well, some of my questions were not the fact that they were questioning him, but if had he been a little white boy walking down the street, he would not have been questioned. Mm -hmm. He would not have been questioned. And in our meeting and in our conference with the higher-ups at the police department, uh, which was simply um, a meeting for right and wrong, I went in and... Ultimately, they said yes, that probably they had not done that before, that they would not have talked to him had they thought that, you know, that he was less likely to be representative of a gang. Um, yeah, he was five years old. For he was five years old. He's walking to school. Yeah. And um, ultimately, what they found was that, yes, it in fact happened. Yes, they questioned him, and they shouldn't have questioned him the way that they did, but they felt that he was justified in doing that. Racial um, profiling. It was a racial profiling yeah. issue. But it really was. Because um, mm -hmm. after speaking with the officer, the officer admitted that, you know, he, had he been white, he would not have been asked that mm -hmm. question. Uh, another instance was for another child um, who remains unnamed. Yeah, um, hey, unnamed. Unnamed. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 the reason why I don't really want to mention their names is because this will come back to them, and yeah. it's, I mean, this is, this, you, I'm on TV, and yeah. we're in our town, and, you know, the whole racial profiling, the whole racial problems will come back and, and get them in some way. Um, I have another child who was saying the word pimping in school. Mm -hmm. um, there are shows on MTV such as, what, Pimp My Ride mm -hmm. and things like that. Def and definition for pimping? Pimping? Mm -hmm. um, that depends. Um, pimping could be a positive thing. Mm -hmm. It could be that you're pimping something out, you're making it better, you're making it look appealing. But again, of course, there's the stereotypical 70s pimping where pimping. you're putting someone out on the street. Yeah, two different um, things, yeah. This person was going to um, Reeves Middle School and was, was actually suspended.